former Cowboy, College Football Hall of Famer from Oklahoma, Tony Casillas, our, uh, our guest tonight. Cut down day for the Cowboys and other NFL teams, Tony, down to uh, 53. You were the number two overall draft pick in 86. It was a while before you had to worry about being released from a team. I don't think that ever really happened for you. You chose to retire, but always kind of a weird day in an NFL locker room, isn't it? You know, it is because even if you feel like you're safe, you, you meet a lot of guys, you know it's a numbers game. And there's 90 guys, you know they're only going to keep 53, so there's going to be some casualties. And I was very fortunate in that, but the problem is you start forging you know, friendships with guys in your team, and you think, while I want them to get a roster spot, I still got to keep security, you know, have some insecurity as my position. want to be my roster spot. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, Mike, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those days that you hope maybe that there's film on guys that get opportunity to go play somewhere else and, you know, able to live the dream. But, uh, you know, that's when the dreams are shattered on, on the Graham Reaper day. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough one today for a lot of guys. Uh, Trey Lance, on the other hand, is now with a new team, the number three overall pick in 2021 for the Niners. He is now a Dallas Cowboys uh, backup quarterback, acquired for a fourth-round pick. I guess just your initial thoughts on this move, which caught a lot of us by surprise. I think it did because the fact when you look at the 49ers, you saw what happened to Brock Purdy. It just shows you that it's a league where they need to find a quarterback fast. And granted, 49ers gave up three first-round draft picks to get the change swap spots in 2021 with Miami, and look what happened and worked. But I think it's a development. I think if people want to make it a bigger story than what it is, and I, I get it. Uh, I don't really feel, I don't feel like that Dak is that sensitive to the noise because he's kind of used to that going that happens around here. But. You know, I think I hope it works out. I mean, they give up a fourth-round draft pick for it. I mean, a developmental player. You don't know what Cooper Russ is going to do next in the next couple of years and bring him in as a backup. And hopefully the kid will be able to kind of validate uh, where they being drafted in the first round and get another shot in the NFL. But I don't think that Dak has to worry about his job anytime soon right now. Yeah, so Dak shouldn't be yeah, threatened. That was going to be my next exactly. question. Here's, here's <laughs> one for you. I've heard this theory that the Cowboys acquired him just to have intel on the Niners when they play the Niners this year and then maybe face them in the playoffs again this year. That might be overthinking it a you little bit. You know, I think huh? that is very overthinking because I know that that was kind of the, the thing and you know, we brought players in and kind of picked their brain and if they memorized the playbook. But... You know, you know, Trey didn't have a chance to play a whole lot while he was at the 49ers. I don't know how much of a sponge he was. I do like maybe the notion that it's maybe a leadership for Dak and Trey to develop him. But, you know, given the fact, and it's a great point, the last two years they've gotten beat by the 49ers and they play him, what, the third week of the season, maybe there's some, you know, maybe there's some truth to that. But I think that that's always grown out of portion. I love it's a storyline. People want to say, yeah. oh, this guy's going to have the playbook and he's going to show you all these secret plays. I don't believe in that nonsense. Only Jerry could orchestrate this. <laughs> but the, the Trey Lance thing is still being talked about by everybody. Uh, let's talk a little real football here. The Eagles will try to become the first team in 20 years to repeat as NFC East champs. Niners, as we've alluded to, are a challenge, obviously. But I don't know if there's any reason why the Cowboys shouldn't be considered a real favorite in the NFC this year. It seems like yeah. the, the, the way is wide open for them maybe to march through this thing. Well, you know, we've been watching this division for some time now, and sometimes it's, uh, you know, it's the NFC least because it hasn't been very good from top to bottom. I think this year is probably collectively the, I would say, the parity in the teams. I think it's probably the strongest division in the National Football League. But I think you really got to look at the Eagles. I mean, you look at the when you look at all three of these, all four of these teams in the National Football League. There's one char characteristic they have in, in, in common, and people know it's not sexy. It's their defensive front. You look at the defensive line on all four of these teams. Arguably, the top four defensive line uh, in the defenses in the National Football League. Uh, but you got to start with Jalen Jalen Hurts and what they've did. I mean, Jalen Hurts to me is the best quarterback in the National Football League, and. Sorry to say that, Cowboy fans, but until you take Talking him out of the NFC East. NFC right. East. Yeah, right, I'm sorry. Right. right. Uh, but my point being is that he took him to the Super Bowl last year. You're hoping maybe they kind of retract a little bit and, 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 and have a little hangover from that last year. But I think collectively, the, the Eagles are the best team, not only the best team in the, in the NFC East, but arguably one of the best teams in the National Football League in a top three or four. 
So you're just to repeat, not just because he was an Oklahoma guy. You're t you would take Hurts over. Well, he was. Over uh, he was a, Dak a, right no, now. he's an Alabama Apple guy. Alabama. He's an SEC guy. But so I guess since Oklahoma's going to the SEC next year, so <laughs> maybe just a little bit. <laughs> uh, any particular area of concern uh, for you with this team? Uh, maybe depth on the offensive line or linebacker or. The kicker situation, they're going with the USFL guy. Wow. Do you wish they had a more uh, veteran uh, NFL kicker than the one they're bringing in apparently to start the season? Well, we saw what happened with Brett Maher last year. That was kind of a catastrophe of the, the whole debacle with missing all the, the extra points. And I think, the, you know, the USFL or whatever player you bring in, you got to have some – You gotta, first of all, you got to have a lot of uh, faith in him, confidence. And once you get that, I think you can kind of move on. But – you know, it's, it's, it's difficult. I mean, it's a position you think, okay, it's really easy, but now since they moved it back in the extra point, it makes a, it's, it's a little bit more yeah, than just a gimmick, right? It, yeah. So I think that that's the thing right there is consistency, but I'll tell you what, we saw what happened to him last year when it came to the kicker. It came back and haunted him in, in, in the very end of the season. It wasn't that good. All right, you played for Jimmy Johnson. You drew a paycheck from Jerry Jones. What are your thoughts on Jerry once again, bypassing Jimmy for the Ring of Honor. Again, Marcus Ware deserves yeah, to be in. Nobody's arguing that, but Jimmy will not be getting in for another year. Can I just say this? I think you can't tell me that it's more elite being in the Ring of Honor than it is in a National Football League Hall of Fame. I mean, the Pro Football Hall of Fame is elite. And you can't tell me Jimmy Johnson, and oh, by the way, it's been 30 years since we won a Super Bowl, Jimmy back to back, nothing against what Barry Switzer did, but. The, the main ingredient, both those guys, Jimmy Johnson and Jerry Jones, fed off each other. But to not put him in, a, in the ring of honor, and again, is DeMarcus Ware, I mean, I, he's a tremendous guy. Congratulations to Pro Football Hall of Fame, ring of honor. And there's a lot of other collective guys that should belong in the ring of honor. I mean, it's a crying shame to, to think that Jimmy Johnson, and these guys aren't getting any older. We're all getting older. I mean, it's been 30 years since the Cowboys won back-to-back -back under Jimmy Johnson. He was my coach. I want to see him, obviously, former players that play for him. The fans want to see him get into the ring of honor. You, the media, I would say, want to see Jerry Jones, excuse me, Jerry Jones induct uh, Jimmy Johnson in the ring of honor. It's nonsense. It should happen. I want to see it. These guys aren't getting any older. It's time for him to go in the ring of honor. I don't know what happened, but I think, to me, sometimes it seems adolescent that he's not in the ring of honor. I asked and you answered. <laughs> Tony, Tony Casillas, always great having you in on the show. Appreciate you, the time. All right.